Okay, so if you want to be successful in math and science, you need to know how to work with formulas. And that's what this video is about. So we have a formula here, and this is a physics formula, and it has something to do about the force uh, between two bodies. So let's say, for example, we have the Earth and the Moon. There is a uh, kind of gravitational pull here that's going on, and this is the formula that we would use. So it's going to be F, or force, is equal to the gravitational constant times uh, mass 1. We'll call that the mass of the moon. Times mass 2. We'll call that the mass of the earth over the radius squared, or r squared, which is the distance between the earth and moon. Okay, so that's what this formula is about, but we're not going to dive into the physics about this formula, but I do want you to kind of be aware that in science, you are dealing with a lot of formulas, which means you need to understand algebra. All right, so here is the goal or your kind of uh, objective in this particular uh, problem is to take this formula and rewrite it in terms of R or to solve this formula in terms of R. Okay, so one more time, we have F is equal to G times M1 times M2 over R squared. So what is R equal to when we rewrite this formula? So R is going to be equal to plus or minus the square root of G times M1 times M2 over uh, F. Okay, and of course, uh, all these uh, particular variables, I just described to you what they mean. But if you got this right, that is fantastic. Matter of fact, let's give you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and a few stars so you can tell your friends and family that you know exactly how to solve for a specific variable in an equation where there's multiple variables, something like a formula. So that is very, very good. And uh, really the skill that we're talking about here is absolutely essential to master to be successful in algebra, mathematics, and of course, science. Because in science, you are working with a ton of formulas, okay? And you know, you're going to have to be able to solve for whatever particular variable you need to uh, solve for in that uh, respective uh, formula. Okay, so if you're given this formula and you're interested in finding out what the radius is, you're going to have to solve for R. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the solution here. So again, here is the equation. And effectively what's going on is that we have a gravitational force, right? So let's say this is the moon and here's the earth. So the moon is, um, you know, going orbiting around the earth, right? Because the earth ha is a larger mass. Okay, so uh, again, I'm not a physicist, although I've taken a lot of um, physics and engineering through the years. Basically, we have this gravitational force, like gravity, right? If we kind of like jump up, let's say here, here's my little stick figure, man, or whatnot. I try to jump up, but guess what's going to happen? That gravitational force is going to bring me back down to the ground, right? So the gra there's a gravitational force here. That's what we're trying to calculate. So G, again, is a gravitational constant, all right? So we don't need to uh, kind of worry about that. Uh, M1 is the mass of um, uh, one object. M2 is the mass of another object. And then R, again, is the radius or the distance between the two uh, objects in space, you know, something like planets, stars, etc. All right. So that's basically the setup, just in case you were curious about this. But um, again, you know, physics is cool, right? Because physics really is like applied math. And um, I'll tell you, if you like math, you'll love physics. So I strongly encourage you to take a physics course. Um, anyways, so let's move on with the solution. And the solution is the following, okay? Well, I'm not actually going to get tell you the actual solution right now because I want to give you a, a little bit simpler prompt just to make sure you understand uh, what's going on here for those of you that might be kind of confused. So let's suppose I have another lovely uh, physics um, formula, F equals M times A. This is force is equal to mass times acceleration. Let's say I wanted to rewrite this formula in terms of M, okay, or solve for M. So how do you do this, right? Well, basically, what you want to do in algebra is identify the variable you're trying to solve for. Uh, in this case, obviously, we're trying to solve for M. So we kind of want to focus in on that M, all right? So in this case, we have force is equal to M times A, all right? So now you're kind of really looking at that M. You're kind of really focusing on this. But 
what you're going to do is the variable you're trying to solve for, that's the only thing, you, only thing you're going to think of as a variable. In other words, you're going to think of this as a variable, okay, in your mind's eye, and then you're going to think of the A as just a number and F as just a number. This is a good way to kind of um, uh, approach rewriting um, formulas and equations um, in different variables. Okay, so here, for example, uh, I got F is equal to M times A. Let's just make up a number for F, an easy number. How about 10? And then M, that's our variable, so we'll keep that as M. We'll make up an easy number for A. How about like 2? Okay, so how would I solve for M given 10 is equal to M times 2? Now, m times 2 is the same thing as 2 times n, right? So we're talking super basic algebra. So to solve for m, all I would have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 2. So m is equal to 10 divided by 2. And in this case, what was 10? Okay, well, 10 was the force, all right? And what was the 2? The 2 was representing like the acceleration. So m is equal to f over a. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. And if that does make sense, then you should be able to do this problem now. Okay, so here is our lovely uh, formula for uh, gravitational force. So let's get into this. Before we continue with the video, please take a quick second to help me out. So what I need you to do is to hit that subscribe button. This really does help my content reach as many people as possible on YouTube. And if you're going to do that, make sure to hit that bell notification as well so you know when my latest videos are posted. All right, so let's go ahead and get back to the video. So the first thing I want you to observe is that we have a fraction here. Anytime you see one fraction and something else all by itself on the other side of the equation, always think in terms of proportions. In other words, construct two equal fractions. So how can I think of F as a fraction? Easy, just put it over 1. So I have f over 1 is equal to uh, all this stuff on the right-hand side of the uh, equation or formula. And now I can just simply use the cross product. Okay, Base, We're talking about basic algebra here, right? So if 1 half is equal to, let's make up a fraction, 4 over 8. Okay, Two equal fractions is, as we have right here, the cross product is always true, i.e. 1 times 8 is equal to 2 times 4. 8 is equal to 8. There you go. Okay, so again, we're talking basic algebra stuff here. So uh, knowing that the cross product is true, we have one fraction is equal to another fraction. Let's go ahead and multiply. So f times r squared is this, f times r squared, and 1 times g uh, times m1 times m2 is this right here. Okay, so we're keeping an eye on our prize, and what are we now focusing in on in terms of a variable? We're focusing in on R. We're concentrating, and we're like, okay, I got a whole bunch of variables going on here, but I'm only thinking of R as the variable. So all this other stuff is just like numbers, right? So you got a number here and a big number here. Effectively, you have a situation, something like this, like 2R squared is equal to like 8 so, I mean, it's really easy, right? So to solve for r squared, we just simply divide both sides of the equation by 2. In this case, just divide both sides of the equation by f. And so we have this. All right, so now we have r squared is equal to just one big number, okay, right here. So how do we solve for r uh, when we are given r squared? Easy. We're going to take the square root of both sides, okay? So in other words, if I gave you r squared is equal to 25 to solve for r, you would just divide or uh, just take the square root of both sides. So r is equal to plus or minus 5. In this case, r is going to be equal to plus or minus all this kind of good stuff right here. Okay, so hopefully this wasn't that difficult. And uh, this is something that you're absolutely uh, going to face, uh, not only in math, but in science, okay? Anytime you're working with formulas and things along these lines, you're going to have to rewrite those formulas uh, very often or solve for a particular variable within that formula, okay? So a lot of students get confused with this. That's what kind of took the time because uh, what, from my experience, uh, decades and decades of teaching mathematics, when you give a student a simple kind of model to kind of think of, 
um, you know, how to approach these problems, something like I did right here, it generally will make things a lot easier. So when you're kind of stuck with this, just slow down. And one thing you could do as well is like, let's say you're, you're dealing with a complicated problem, just stop yourself and try to look at a simpler version of that problem and ask yourself, okay, what would I do here with that simpler version? And, you know, calm your mind down and be like, okay, now I know what to do. And then just kind of start tackling, you know, uh, the same steps, um, you know, take your time with something more complicated like this. So I hope this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, if you need additional help in algebra, check out these courses right here. So pre-algebra is uh, for those of you that are studying basic algebra. But uh, if you are further along in mathematics, then you may want to check out my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 courses. Now, my Math Skills Rebuilder course is a review course. I cover basic math, algebra, and geometry in this course. I'm going to leave links to all these courses in the description of this video. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.